SACC asks, what is the most reliable way to generate live graphical overlays with animations? Think scoreboards with dissolves when the score changes and rotating sponsor logos. And then how do I send that to an ATEM? Well, good timing of this question because I've actually just discovered a new service and it is completely free to do exactly this. It's called Uno. And if you go to overlays.uno, you'll find this website here. What Uno allows you to do is to create fully customizable live animated overlays. Uh, you can customize all the colors of, of your overlays and I'll show you an example in a second. And then it gives you an output URL, which you can use in OBS. You can use it in Ecamm Live, vMix and stuff like that. And then I'm also going to show you in a second how to use it with ATEM as well, because it links back to another question that I've had then. So it gives you a, a URL and the good thing about operating it, it is fully, you can operate it anywhere. You can operate it on a tablet. You can operate it on a web browser. You can even use a Stream Deck plugin. They've got a Stream Deck plugin as well. And it's all happening in the cloud. So you can operate it from anywhere in the world. Your operator doesn't need to be in the same place where you're actually creating the show from. So let me show you some of the templates that they've got here because they've got loads. And by the way, this isn't sponsored by them. I just really like the service. It's made by the same company that I use for all my professional broadcast graphics for all my clients, singular.live. But this at the moment is a completely free version because they basically are creating templates for you um, rather than you going and doing a complete bespoke graphics build, you use their templates. So if we click on try overlays here, and they've got a bunch for all different sports, news broadcasting, everything. Um, but as you mentioned, I think it was soccer. Let's go and find one of those. So if we go into category and click show more, we'll go into sport here. And then let's find one that we like the look of. I quite like this uh, champion style here. And if you hover over any of them, it shows you what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to go also into theme and just select champion. Then we can see all of the ones in this particular style. Now you said you wanted a, a scoreboard or score bug. So this is an example. And if we click on it, it gives you more of a detailed view. But actually, I want to show you how easy it is to create one of these. So I'm going to click the try overlay. And this is exactly what you would do as well. So this gives you the overlay interface, and this is where you're going to control the overlay and also customize it as well. So if we want to change some of the coloring, we can come over here. Maybe we, our brand is more of like a, an orange brand, let's say. Uh, make that, yeah, there we go. Um, so we can change the coloring of this. And then to actually use it, we can customize the team. So let's say Japan, our team one, and they're or at home, and they're playing England. And you can see as we update these, down here, they're updating in real time on the actual graphic as well. And then this is your control surface as well to actually use the overlay. So if, you know, Japan score, we just click one down here and you can see it will update in the graphic and it will update with animation as well. So if England were to score the away team, when I click this, there we go. You get a nice little rotate animation up there. We can fade on the overlay on and off using this switch here. And it's a nice animation to animate it on and off screen. We can even add things like stoppage time down here as well. So if there's three minutes of stoppage time, we just put that in here and then we show it and it will appear in the graphic over here. And if we want to take it off screen, we can do exactly the same. And of course, there's the match clock as well. And it's fully customizable down here. You can actually select what type of match it is. So for six minute quarters or in this case, soccer or football in the UK, two 45 minute halves and you just hit play. And you can see up there, the, the clock starts. If you need to pause it, you can. You can restart it. You can even jump to a particular second or a minute if you need to do that, and then hit play. And you're good to go. So it has got gives you all of the tools you need for certain situations, in this case, a soccer match, but without having to build it. And you can customize the coloring so it does still fit your brand. With the output URL that it gives you, as I say, you can then take that into let's say uh, a software like OBS, Ecamm Live, vMix, and use it straight away. But what happens if you wanna bring it into a hardware system like an ATEM Mini, for example? Well, that links really nicely into this question we had in from Bradley JP Productions. Hey Alex, really enjoyed the videos and they've helped me a lot. So I'm looking to upgrade my live graphics as I'm not getting good results with the green screen keying. So I'm looking at the Ultra Studio HD Mini, the Ultra Studio 4K Mini, or HyperDeck Studio HD Plus. I'm using Graphius, I think it is, which is a bit like H2R graphics. So what's the best above Blackmagic device for key and fill graphics and why? And can you also play videos at the same time? 
If you're gonna be working with live editable graphics, things that need to be updated in real time, things like lower thirds, or in this case, a score bug, you're going to need an Ultra Studio. Even though the Hyperdeck does have key and fill output, it's not really a workflow that can be done fast. You have to change the graphic in your editing software, render out that file with an alpha channel, put it on an SD card, put it in the Hyperdeck, and then hit play. So where you can use a Hyperdeck for graphics is things where it doesn't need to be done quickly. Things like stingers are really useful. You just render them out before the show, pop them on the SD card, and then you can trigger them whenever you need them. But for graphics that need to be updated in real time, you're gonna to wanna to use a graphic software and then use an Ultra Studio to get that into your Vision Mixer. Now that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is, which Ultra Studio do you go for? And that just depends on what workflow you're gonna apply this to. If you're gonna be using this in a 4K workflow or likely to be upgrading to 4K soon, go for the Ultra Studio 4K. If you're just working with A10 Minis in 1080p, go for the HD model. It's gonna give you the exact same functionality. Both models are gonna give you a key and fill output. For those that are new to the Ultra Studio, by the way, I have one here. This is the 4K mini version, and it is a capture and playback device that operates over Thunderbolt 3. If I show you the back here, it's got a number of inputs and outputs, but importantly for this particular workflow, it has two SDI outputs. You get an A and a B, which you can use as key and fill outputs. So let me show you how easy the setup is for the Ultra Studio to output to the ATEM. And the first thing we're gonna need is the output URL that the graphic software that we're using gives us. So whether it's Graphius in your case, or in my case, Uno. So I'm just gonna go into the overlays.uno webpage that I've got here, and I'm just gonna select my or copy my output URL. And then we're actually gonna use OBS to create the key and fill. And that's gonna interface with our Ultra Studio here. So I'm gonna open up OBS. And there's a couple of things that you'll need to do. We're not gonna use this for streaming. We're just using this to create the key and fill uh, channels that the A10 Mini will then use for keying that graphics onto your, uh, your output. So we've got our overlay, uh, our um, OBS interface here. A Couple of things to just do. Go into the settings down here, and then we're not gonna stream, so we don't need to worry about that, but if we just go down to the video section, we just wanna make sure that our canvas and our uh, output are both set to 1080p if that's what we're working in. If you're working in 4K, you can set it to 4K. And then make sure that your frames per second is set the same as your ATEM. So I work in 50 frames per second here in the UK, so that's what I've set it to. Now the other thing that you're gonna to need to do, you're gonna to need to go into the advanced settings in OBS here and change your color format from whatever is set, you want it to be RGB. Now you wouldn't use RGB for things like streaming or anything like that, but because we're using it to create the key and fill um, output for the Ultra Studio, that is what we need. So I'm gonna hit the plier here and then hit okay. And now we can bring our graphics in. So we copied that URL, we're gonna to go to the bottom We've already created a blank scene. I've just created scene two here. Click the plus icon at the bottom, and we're gonna bring in that graphics using a browser source in OBS. So I'm just gonna call this overlays. And this is where you paste your URL that your graphic software gave you. And we're just gonna set the canvas again to 1920 by 1080, because I'm working in 1080p. You can use a custom frame rate and I might set 50 frames per second here, but I'll leave it on that as default and then just click OK. And you'll see in a few seconds that will bring in our overlay, which we've got up here now. But how do we get this to the Ultra Studio? And that's why we use OBS, because it has a function up here in the tools menu called deck link output. And I know we're not using a Blackmagic deck link, but this does work for Ultra Studios and deck link cards. So if you are using a deck link card, this will work as well. So if we go to deck link output here, it's gonna bring up this tab here and we've got two options. We've got output and preview output. We're gonna be using the output tab. Now, once you have your Ultra Studio plugged in via Thunderbolt 3 to your computer, I'm using a Mac in this case, but it does work for Windows as well. It has to be Thunderbolt 3 enabled and you have your Ultra Studio uh, set up and all the um, setup utility installed on your computer, then you should see your Ultra Studio show up in this deck link output. You'll also see the uh, resolution and frame rates that you can select here. Of course, if you change those in the Ultra Studio setup utility, then these will, these will also change in OBS. So I'm working and I've set my Ultra Studio up in 1080p 50, so that's why I get this option here. 
And then importantly, we want to make sure that the Kia is set to external. We want the ATEM that we're using, whether it be a mini or a bigger ATEM, to do the actual keying. We, what we want the Ultra Studio to do and OBS to do is just to provide that key and fill um, feed. We don't want it to do any of the keying. So we click external here. Then you hit start. And that will immediately start sending a fill source out of the SDI A output on the Ultra Studio Mini and a key source out of the SDI output B on the Ultra Studio Mini. And if I look down at the screen on my Ultra Studio Mini here, I can actually see the graphic appearing on the screen as well. And that's how we know it's working. Now you need to get your key and fill source out from the Ultra Studio's SDI ports and into your ATEM vision switcher. And that actually links to a question that we've had in from George who says, on the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO models, can you send an alpha key via two SDI inputs? And yes, that's definitely the method that I would recommend. I'd try and keep the workflow completely SDI if possible. So you can take your two SDI outputs from here and plug two SDI cables into two SDI inputs on an ATEM SDI or even up to the much bigger Blackmagic ATEM switches, the ATEM Extreme 8K, for example. They've all got SDI inputs and that's the workflow that I would recommend. But I realize a lot of you watching this will want to do this with HDMI switches as well. So maybe you've got an ATEM Mini Pro, for example, and want to be able to do this. It does work. There are some caveats and you can do it. What you basically need to do is still come out of the two SDI ports on the Ultra Studio, but you need to take those into a converter and convert from SDI to HDMI. So a Blackmagic SDI to HDMI converter will work fine. A Blackmagic bidirectional converter will work fine. And then you take the HDMI output from the converter into two HDMI inputs on your A10 Mini. It works, but the reason I, I recommend the SDI workflow over HDMI workflow is because it helps to avoid any mistiming or misalignment issues. HDMI, unfortunately, isn't a broadcast standard, SDI is. So what you can sometimes get when you do this over HDMI into an A10 mini HDMI model is the two feeds, for it to work correctly, they need to be perfectly in line they can't be sort of pixel shifted at all. And they need to also be perfectly in time so that when you animate the graphic off, both the key and the fill layer move off at the same time. If they're ever so slightly one or two frames out, it's going to ruin the, uh, the transparency and the effect and things like that. So with HDMI, you don't get that sort of precise timing. And you sometimes can find there's a sort of pixel mis misalignment and you'll see black bars. Uh, uh, sort of either side of your graphics or if there's a missed timing you'll see that when you create any sort of movement to the graphic it doesn't quite look right the transparency isn't right and things like that if that does happen it doesn't happen very often but if it does happen the fix for it is quite simple you just pull your two hdmi cables out the back of the a10 mini give it a few seconds plug them back in it usually then causes the two HDMI signals to realign. It, it does happen from time to time. That's why I always recommend trying to keep everything SDI based. But if you have to go HDMI based, there's your fix. The final step is to set up your downstream keyer in the ATEM so that you can actually key these graphics over your output. So go into your ATEM software control and open up the downstream keys menu here. And we're gonna set this up for key one. And what you're gonna do is select the fill source here and the key source as the two inputs or the outputs coming from your Ultra Studio into your A10 Mini input. So in my case, it's uh, input seven and for the fill source and input eight for the key source. So set that to whatever your corresponding inputs are on your A10. Then all you're gonna need to do is scroll down here. Now you might as default have pre-multiply key already selected. You're gonna wanna unselect that and a good starting base for these values here, the clip and the game value, is around 50% for the clip and somewhere around 12.5% for the gain. Now, this works for me. If it doesn't look quite right, maybe you have a bit of a, a black background or something, you can just move these sliders and tweak them ever so slightly until uh, you get a good key for your graphics. But a really good starting base that I've always found is around 50% for the clip and 12% for the gain. Once you've done that, all you need to do is then hit on air for your downstream key one, and you should see your graphics appear on screen over your output.
I realize I went over all of that quite quickly. So I'm going to release a much more detailed version of that setup and also talk about some of the extra things that you can do with an Ultra Studio setup in a future video. So if you want to see that one, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell. If you need help with your setup, my email address is on screen now. So you can email me and we'll set up a one-to-one -one consulting session. I can take a look at your setup, make some recommendations, talk about some of the kit that you might benefit from. Or if you've had any questions specifically from today's video, of course, get in contact and we can set up one of those one-to-one -one sessions and go through it. Once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.